Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up a podcast recording using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're going to make some assumptions here. We're going to assume you have two in-person guests. For that, we're going to use a Shure SM58 and the Rode PodMic. They're both great sounding $100 microphones. They have very different attributes. But if you're doing a home podcast or recording with your voice, these two are very capable microphones. Uh, so we're gonna put, plug both of those in for this. Uh, and also we're gonna multi-track record using GarageBand on my laptop. Now, with something like the Focusrite Scarlett, it's not a full-on audio mixer. So we don't really have the option of doing things like live listening to a YouTube channel from a laptop or something like that. This thing's really built for plugging two microphones in and chatting, so that's what we're gonna show you in this video. We're also gonna show you how to connect a headphone splitter because like we said, we have two in-person guests, so what if they both want headphones? This unit only has one headphone output, so we're gonna plug that in as well. And we're gonna see if we need the cloud lifter for any of the microphones. If the gain gets too close to that nine out of 10 mark, then we will bring in the cloud lifter to help with the microphone. Uh, just because this, this uh, audio interface especially, it does get quite noisy once you push it past nine out of 10. So the cloud lifter might help us there. And then we're, we're gonna plug everything in with the Focusrite Scarlett pointed up just for the benefit of the overhead cam. But since the USB input is on the back, we're gonna try plug everything in, then we'll connect it to the computer. It's a little bit backwards from usual, but I think it'll offer a better visual as to what I'm doing and the order of operations and what I'm thinking about when I do it. And then we'll multi-track record in GarageBand and gives you, give you some tips for how to export uh, from GarageBand as well. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect the Shure SM58 microphone to the first channel of the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface. Plug this in. We'll plug it into channel 1. And we'll turn the gain all the way down on both inputs. Next, we'll plug the Rode pod mic into channel 2. Okay. Next, we'll plug this balanced quarter inch cable to the headphone output of the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. And we'll plug the other end into this four way headphone splitter that I have. And then we'll connect our headphones to the first output of this splitter. Great. So I think all our connecting of cables is done. So we're going to lean this forward. I'm going to try to get some of the cables out of the way so you can see as best as you can. And then we're going to connect this audio interface to the computer and start a brand new GarageBand file. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video will work for any audio software. This will work for Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, uh, Cubase, Adobe Edition, GarageBand. The same techniques will work for all of them, so just know that. So in GarageBand, we'll create a new empty project. And here's a very critical uh, dialog box here. So you don't want it to be a stereo recording. We want to bring these in separately. So for now, we want a new track that's an audio track. And it can, you can see here that it's already detected the Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. Next, we're going to need to create a second track. When we select that track, we want to go down in this options menu here and select channel 2. So watch this right here as I select channel one, great. So you can see input one is on audio track one, and on audio track two, it's input two from the audio interface. That's exactly what we want. That'll give us two different tracks, so we can EQ them separately or adjust the level separately after the fact. We don't want this coming into a stereo recording. We might as well use the functionality here, just in case we need to edit some things later. Now I'm going to speak into the Shure SM58. I'm going to turn off these air switches that are on. As I speak into the Shure SM58, we want to keep talking until we're getting pretty constant flickering from that green light. Now we don't want it to be constant. We don't want it to go yellow. 
uh, we will see audio degradation and we want especially for a podcast podcasts can get quite dynamic people can get animated and excited about topics so we want to make sure that we we have plenty of headroom especially since we're putting it into GarageBand anyway we can always boost it in post so we want to leave that option to us so here we can see that we're turned up to about 75 percent and I'm pretty happy with that Next, as we speak into the Rode Pod mic, we're gonna keep turning up the gain. And again, we're gonna wait for that green flashing light. So here on the Rode Pod mic, you can tell that it is requiring more gain. We're getting really close to that nine out of 10 mark. And for that reason, I'm gonna be a lot more comfortable with this recording if we connect it to the cloud lifter to get some additional gain as an inline preamp for this microphone. So I'm gonna turn that all the way down. I'm gonna unplug this microphone from the second channel of the audio interface. I'm gonna plug it into the cloud lifter. Move this up here. Then I'm gonna connect that cloud lifter to the audio interface. Now what the cloud lifter does is it basically trades phantom power for reduced gain. So as we plug this in, kind of surrounding myself with the cables, we need to turn on phantom power. Now this is a good point to raise about this audio interface, is with something like a Shure SM58, that's a balanced dynamic microphone, we can still have one microphone with phantom power from this audio interface and one without. That won't hurt anything at all. With things like ribbon microphones or some unbalanced dynamic microphones, which are extremely rare, you can run into issues. But uh, for this, we are just using a plain old SM58, so we can send it phantom power. We turn that on. That won't help this microphone in any way, but it will not hurt it either. Okay, so phantom power is on, so that means the cloud lifter is activated. So now we're going to speak into this Rode pod mic. Keep turning it up. And there, you can see that we're getting a really healthy level again. Now we're like just a hair over 50%, maybe we're 55%, where before we were at 90%. So the cloud lifter is clearly doing its job here, and this is gonna be much more helpful for us when we record. Now with the Rode pod mic as well, you do have, well with both mics, actually you have the option foam filters uh, for them, but we're just gonna leave them both uh, factory default for now. Okay, so now as we go over to our computer, I'm gonna speak into track one. So for some reason the meters aren't moving, so I'm gonna hit Alt-D or Alt-T. There it is. So we hit record enable. And then for both microphones, we're gonna arm them. Just a single click on that. And now you can see that they're both receiving level and they're ready to go. So this is me speaking into the Shure SM58. And this is me speaking into the Rode Pod mic. There, we should, we're seeing the green lights blinking, they're not going yellow, and we can see both of them separately moving in GarageBand. That's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna turn, take my headphones here, put them on. We do have some monitoring options that I wanna discuss uh, with this Focusrite Scarlet as well. We have this direct monitoring button. So I'm gonna single click that, so there's a single circle lit. What this will do is it'll put both microphones into both ears. Since we're sharing a headphone splitter, I think that's the best option. So we're gonna leave that setting on. The other option would put one microphone in one ear and the other microphone in the other ear, and that would be kind of confusing, I think, if we're just having a natural discussion for a podcast. So I'm gonna leave the first option enabled. That allows us to hear uh, what we're doing here as we record the podcast. So back over to GarageBand, I'm gonna hit record. You see it's recording now. So this is guest number one, speaking in a Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. You can see that there is some crosstalk. The road is picking it up as well, but don't worry about that. These microphones would be facing apart. This is guest number two, speaking in the Rode pod mic. We can see already that the gain is a little bit hot on this one, so I am gonna turn it down a little bit. We're gonna try to get these two gains similar. This is the Shure SM58. I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit. This is the Shure SM58. This is the Rode pod mic. This is the Rode pod mic. This is the Shure SM58. This is the Rode pod mic. So that would conclude our sound check. I'm gonna hit stop on the recording. I'm pretty comfortable with how that level matches up with that level. 
we're both in the same ballpark. We're not seeing spikes way up to the top of the channel. I think that's a very healthy level that gives us a lot of headroom after the fact so we can adjust the gain or add compression or EQ and do all those things after. But this will be enough to capture a high quality recording for this podcast. Now, if you don't want to do any post-processing on this whatsoever, if you just want to render this out and upload it so everybody can listen to your podcast, I would highly recommend that you go into GarageBand Preferences and that you check this advanced spot and hit Export Projects at Full Volume. What that'll do is if you hit Share, Export Song to Disk, it will automatically normalize it, which means that it will expand these to go all the way to minus one dB or something like that. GarageBand does its own little algorithm there, but it will raise the volume of both your tracks there to make it a little bit louder for when you publish it. Uh, and it'll do that for you automatically. Every version of audio software has an option like that. In Logic and Adobe Edition, it's called normalizing. I'm sure that's the same in everything else as well. So you want to normalize the audio before you publish it. So again, if you want pricing or specs for anything that you see in this setup here, we do have links in the description below. If you have any questions about why I did something a certain way or what I think about various parts of this aspect, what I would improve, please leave a comment in the comment section below. We read every comment. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.